you came to do, and I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, and I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, and I came to praise the Lord. I came to clap my hands, I came to song my feet, I came to praise His name. Well, I came to praise the Lord. Today is the church on fire. We came to praise the Lord. Today is the church on fire. We came to church on fire. We came to praise the Lord. I came to clap my hands. I came to stomp my feet. I came to praise His name. Well, I came to praise the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He held my body. He touched my mind. He saved me and it was just in time. but we're going to praise the Lord in here.
against them and accusing them because that's what he does he comes against us and he tells us all the reasons why we're bad and you know what sometimes he's right but God but God's righteousness covers us and so sometimes you just have to look at the enemy when he's coming at you and he's accusing you and say you know what I'm not deserving of God's grace but he gave it to me anyway I'm not deserving of his mercy but he gave it to me anyway Sometimes you just got to look him square in the eyes and say, you're right, but God, but God is on my side. God is my advocate. God is the one who goes before me. God is the one who's making intercess intercession for me on the right hand of the father. God's got me. And if the enemy's coming against you like that, you just look him right in the eyes and you say, I don't deserve God's grace, but he gave it to me anyway. I don't deserve his mercy, but he gave it to me anyway. And I feel like sometimes we just let the enemy just beat our brains in. We know who we've been, and so does the enemy. And God knows who we've been to, and he looked at us and he said, that one's mine. That's the one I died for. He saw us in our sin, and he said, they're worth it. They're worth it. So today, if you've been just riddled with not feeling good enough, you remind yourself that your God said that you're worth it. And don't look back. You tell the enemy just to hush in Jesus' name. Verse 2. I thought I deserve to be six feet beneath the earth. For all the things I've Choices made that I regret Oh, I would still be Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Pastor Judy comes to bring the word. Oh, sure, Pastor. Praise the Lord. I'm associate, Pastor. I know. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you. But I love Jesus. You know, I appreciate the ones that come out. I know the youth are going out to do their uh, thing in the building, which is okay. God's got here he wants, and I appreciate the ones that come out in the rain. But I, I want us to be ready to hear the word. Are we ready yet? Are we ready? Praise the Lord. I, I have, this is a sort of unusual for me, but the message that the Lord gave me was, do you have a wardrobe malfunction? I know you think about things, you know, you wear something sometimes and uh, buttons might pop off or zippers might get stuck. or zip. I'm not talking about that. Have you got a wardrobe? Call? And, I, and I got to thinking about what he began to tell me. And there's four scenarios I want to show you to, tonight. But the thing is this. God is trying to repair a people. He has for a while. A soldier, an army. And a lot of things, even Brother John preach, and I try to preach and teach, is the fact is get us ready for what God's getting ready to do. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. And in our scriptures tonight that God's given me, I want you to go and turn to Genesis 35 2. I wrote some of them down because sometimes I get to going faster. But the thing is this Have you ever mix, mix match something? Would you wear, Bobby, if you had a big flowery top, would you wear a bunch of squares all over your pants? That'd be mixed matched a little bit, wouldn't it? Right? I'm just using it for a crazy example. The thing is, there's a lot of malfunction clothing going on in God's body. Thank you, Brother John. I heard the mm-hmm. Thank you. And, then, and the Lord began to speak to him about some things. And in this scripture in Genesis 35, 2, it was talking about the Lord's talking to Jacob. But what had happened up prior to this was that Jacob's daughter was raped by a, a prince of another country. And si Simeon or Simon and Levi went to those people and was mad. And he, they were going to, well, they sneakily told something that wasn't true. But they're getting ready to annihilate all of them, kill them all. But... They What they did, they didn't like it. So what they did was they went to him and talked to him. And I said, they tell you what, if you want to intermarry, what we'll do is, and he did trickery on them. I want you to come on in. I'll be in here to get going rolling in a minute. What he said is, you'll get them all circumcised. They, we can all join together, and we'll all be okay. Well, they got circumcised, but while they've been circumcised, he comes in, Simeon and Levi, and kills all the men. While they're still in pain, they can't fight, and destroys them. And Jacob says... My, I don't know what we're going to do. We're just small in number. We're small in number. The, uh, the Canaanites and all these other people are going to come against us. And the Lord spoke to Jacob and said, Rise up, go to Bethel, build an altar. And this is what he said to his people. He said, I want you to put away your strange gods, be clean, and change your garments. Change your clothes. It's time we change our clothes. Y'all not hearing me. I'm not talking about the natural clothes on your body because I don't preach that. 
Amen. That's something you've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. When you get your heart right, you'll dress right, talk right, and walk right. Amen. Amen, Sister Judy. What I am talking about, we got to get a change in a thing coming in our life. And the Lord began to deal with me. Come here, uh, Don, come here. And the Matthew is where I got this scripture in the Matthew 7. You got another one there, Philip. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what he is is a man in sheep's clothing. Now, I want you to hear me. And I know Matthew 7 talks about false prophets and false teachers. But the Lord began to speak to me. He said, my people, some of them are sheep in wolf's clothing. You got your wolf's mat. Where's you at? Where it at? Bring it out. We don't want to scare nobody. All the kids is gone. Hold on to that just for a second. You said, what are you talking about, Judy? Have you ever been to a place in your life that you changed to be what somebody wanted you to be? I watch these crazy movies, and these women will act like to get this man's attention. They'll pretend they're a good golfer, go to the golf course, can't golf a lick. One tells her she's a baker, go, and he burns up, she burns up air of food in the house because she wants to get their attention. Sometimes we pretend to be something that we're not. I know this is going to sound hard, but I want y'all to get in because the Lord give me this, I'm giving it to y'all. Y'all can throw stones at me if you want to, okay? But that's okay. But somebody that's an imposter or imitates. How many remember going to church when you was, I do, when I was young, kids used to imitate people shouting. Remember that, John? What up? You imitate people shouting. You pretend to be like them. You know, and some of us, sometimes we look at people and say, I'd like to be them. I know you don't. God meant for you to be somebody special just who you are. And if you got to change everything about you, pretend to be something you are that you're not, shame on you. It will destroy you. It's like a sheep in wool's closing. Because what's going to happen if you try to change for somebody else? That bitterness is going to come up inside. That wolf's nature is going to come up inside of you. You're going to get bitter. You're going to get mad. And you know what? What's on side, inside of you is going to come out. You will manifest who you are. I don't care how well you dress me up or whatever. Who I am is what I manifest I am. It's not who I say I am. It's who God says I am. And God says I'm a child of the king. You tell the devil I am who I am by the grace of God. And I'm going to stand and be me. Take off your mask and be who you are. And let God do the work. Don't walk around in sheep's clothes. I remember a story in the Bible about Jacob and Esau. Jacob wanted Esau's blessing. So he goes in, his father's half blind, and he dresses up like Esau. He puts on sheep things and all kinds of stuff on his arms, make himself feel hairy and feel like Esau did. He dressed like him, but he wasn't Esau. The nice, good Jacob turned to be a liar, deceitful to his father. Do you understand? He changed to be somebody else to get a blessing. And somebody that's a wolf, you know what? They don't like authority. They don't. They like to be number one. They like to have control. But I don't want, I want to be a sheep of God that knows when to bow and when to follow Jesus and do what he says to do and be nice and be gentle. Hello? Yes, I do. But Jacob pretended to be Esau, went in. And his father knew his voice was different, but he touched him and he thought he was Esau. He deceived his father. He became something that he wasn't. He wasn't Esau. He took on another nature. God wants us to be real. How many understand that? You say, Sister Judy, I'm real. I ain't talking to you then. I'm real as I can be. There's a lot of people that don't know who they are. They don't. They lost. They don't know who their identity is. You don't know who you are. You don't know where you fit in. You don't know where you belong. But if you'll get it connected with Jesus, you'll know where you belong. I want to be what God has called me to be. I want to be real. Amen. So be who you are. Don't be a sheep. Because, you know, people can dress like a sheep. They can act like one sometimes. But they bite like a wolf. And devour you in a moment. So really, we need to know the dessert. We need to know what the will of God is in our life. I don't want to be, and I don't know why the Lord gave me that, but I don't want to be a sheep walking around. What's called, I want to be real. I don't want to pretend to be somebody else. And if you know me, I'm just plain old Judy Rich. Give me a title or not, I'm just Judy Rich. I've been saved by the grace of God and redeemed by the blood of God. And I know that I'm a child of the King and a daughter of the Most High God. And I've been washed.
washed in the blood of the Lamb. And once I was lost, but now I'm found. And that's not just worse to me. I know this life is in these bones. And the next, thank you. You can go back right, right quick, front, front seat. And I want to tell you something else. How I many know, when I talk about putting off and putting on their scriptures, I want to read this to you right before I show you something else. And I'm not going to keep you long because I want to show you something. Some of you need a touch from God. And some of you still need to come on in the house, as they say. Some of you need to get connected in the spirit. The scriptures in Ephesians 4.22 says, Put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. That's one thing you got to take off. Another thing you take off is in Galatians 13, 8. Put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy conversations. That's just some of the stuff. But I'm not going to leave you naked. I'm going to put some clothes on you. Okay? All right, Romans 13, 14 says, Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And some interpretation says, Clothe ye with the Lord Jesus Christ. And not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Colossians 13, 12 says, put on. Everybody say, put on. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. Long-suffering. Patience. Everybody say, thank God for patience. Thank God for patience. Praise the Lord. I've told you some things to put on and some things to put off. But you know what? We've got to get connected back to God. We've got to. I, I know people that can quote scriptures and can go to church and they are so unhappy. And they're unhappy because they haven't got the freedom. They've never really been loosed in the spirit of the Lord to be able to be free and walk in the spirit in the life of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I don't want to exist. I want to live life. And Jesus said he'd come to give it to us more abundantly. So why are we just existing? Amen? Praise the Lord. Come here. Who's my second one? Come here, my soldier. Thank you, Lord. Now, that's one way we don't want to be sheep in, in, in wolf's clothing, right? Everybody say amen. Now, I want to tell you some things that you got to put on. It's quiet in here, but that's okay. Praise the Lord. Now, to be a soldier in the army of the Lord or be a soldier, period, you go through training. And some say it's rough training. But in that, when you go out to battle, you better have the right clothing on. You better have the right things to fight the enemy with. Every day and every morning you wake up, I hope you put on new clothes. Physically and spiritually. Because if not, you're going to be smelly. And stinking. And sin stinks. So you better put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope y'all connecting. We got to dress. And who makes the choices every morning? We do. We make the choice of what we're going to put on in the morning. I'm talking about physically? Okay, but I'm talking about spiritually. I don't know what my battle's going to be next week. I better put on the armor of God and don't leave not one part of it because if the battle comes against me, i got to have something to fight with. Amen? So the first thing I want you to know, I want you to realize you got to have the helmet of salvation. And I'm starting from the top and using this as the last piece they put on. But I'm going to tell you what, without the helmet of salvation, you can't make it in this army. We have got to learn to capture the thoughts of our mind and bring them into captivity under the obedience of Christ. Because when a soldier's on the battle and he gets shot in the head or the head cut off, the body can't operate. The body, whether you're talking physically or spiritually, has got to have a head. Because that head tells the body what to do. Oh, I hope y'all get this. There's so many ways you can look at that. If you get the head cut off or the head gets blown, you must forget about the rest of your armor. We have got to learn to renew our mind every day. There's a battle you may have done at work yesterday. Tomorrow's going to be another battle. What you going to do with it if you're not armed? You've got to be dressed to go out to war. You know, John preached good this morning about the fact we just settle so many things. We settle for things. Why can't we change things in our life? I'm not who I used to be. And I pray to God none of us is who we used to be. But we're on a journey. There's chapters that God is writing in my book, and I hope every day a new thing is moving in my life that God's looking to 
Because the greater me ain't come out yet. Y'all better watch out. The breastplate of righteousness that covers the heart. Now, when you get thoughts in your heart, listen, I mean, your mind, it goes to your heart. Then your heart reacts with emotions, and sometimes it's not good. So you've got to have your mind and your head protected. This whole armor is going to be, end up being the Word and the Spirit of the Lord. Breastplate of righteousness, the right way of living, knowing how to live and walking therein. You make mistakes, you ask God to forgive you, and you go on. Don't lay in it. He's got the sword of the Spirit. Pretend with John this morning about, i get you to get my scripture. We pick like that. I would never hurt him, not intentionally. I don't think, ever. Sword of the Spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, this tells you about the armor of God. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, 11 through 18. This is the word of the Lord. The sword of the Spirit is the word of the Lord. Well, Judy, I go to church and I listen to the words. You've got to have more than that. Because sometimes you don't hear sometimes what the preacher's saying. Sometimes it goes in one ear out the other. Sometimes it falls on good ground. Sometimes it falls upon thorns, the cares of this world. Sometimes it falls in bad places. We need the Word of God at home. And he said, I don't want to just eat the Word of God. I want it moved by the Holy Ghost that it stirs the Word of God inside of me, that it creates life inside of me. Because Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So when I speak the Word of God, it should be spirit and life. Not death. Not doom. Y'all bottles, come on in this house. I, among here was supposed to be a belt. That belt held up every bit of that armor. The loin, the belt of truth. Truth will set you free. Sometimes we don't like to hear truth, but truth will set you free. And Jesus told him, he said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. So I got to take on Jesus Christ. I got to put him on from my head down to my toes. My feet have got to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. I'm talking about the word of the Lord because it makes me stable. It makes me stand when the storms are blowing in my life. When the word of God is moved by the spirit of the Lord, I'm going to preach if I preach to myself tonight, Brother John, because there's one thing about those battles coming, and you better be armed with the armor of God from your head to your toes to win this battle. Thank you, Lord. Can I have your shield of faith? Had to make one because I didn't have one with what they gave me. Shield of faith. Faith comes by what? Hearing what? Hearing the word of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord. Faith is something I can't see. So when I look at my life, sometimes God's working. Sometimes I can't see it. Hello? When I pray and I believe God says something, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. If he said he's going to fix your marriage, he's going to fix your marriage, but he's going to use you to fix it. Oh, did I say that? A lot of this said, he said, take on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Take up the sword of the spirit. Us do that. Is that what he said? That's what he said. Shield of faith. Why do I need a shield of faith? Because when the enemy starts throwing darts at me in Ephesians 6 chapter, it says I can avoid the fiery darts that the enemy throws at me. If he throws one here, I can catch it. If it's here, I've got... But when the Bible, if you read about the armor, their armor covered them from head to toe, the shield did. And when they got in battle, sometimes they go back to back and that armor would stand up and it would prevent any of them of feeling any of the darts that would come at them. We need the shield of faith. If we don't need faith, we need to say, God, encourage me. Increase my faith. At least let me have like a seed of a, uh, like a mustard seed. And he said, if I had it like a mustard seed, I could speak to the mountain and be thou removed. Is that what he said? I'm talking about things that we allow to come up in our life like mountains. God said, we could speak to them. No, Lord, I want you to speak to them. No, I'll put words in your mouth to speak to the mountain. We have got to learn that God's raising up an army and he's gave us the tools that we need and we need to go forth in the army of the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. There is coming a move, and I keep saying this, and I can't help keep saying this. And some of you want to be left behind, that's right. But God is raising up this army that we've been talking about. But, honey, you got to be prepared to march in this army. I'm talking about an outpouring like some of you have never seen of the Spirit of God. I'm talking about a Shekinah glory of God that's going to move through this earth, and it's starting in some places. It's because people's getting connected to Jesus. Full armor of God. You got your helmet. You got your breastplate. You got your sword. You got your shield. You got your belt with your loins. You got your feet. There's another thing you got to apply. Prayer. People leave out that prayer. Getting connected. It said pray in the spirit. Read. I think it's Ephesians 6, 18. Pray in the spirit. There's a difference in saying, well, John uses this. I don't lay me down to sleep. But just saying, Lord, bless him. Good night. Thank you for taking care of me. Amen. I never touched him. That's just words. But when I pray from my heart, and I pray in the Spirit, and I allow the Spirit to move inside of me to pray what I need to pray, praise the Lord, that's when I know that God's going to hear and answer me. Even if I have to wrestle with what I'm praying with. He preached this morning about Jacob wrestling with the man or the angel of the Lord or God, whoever you want. He's wrestling with himself. But he wrestled all night. How long has it been since we had to wrestle and say, God, I need you to do this because I need you to bless this situation. And I'm not going to turn you loose till you do it. We let loose too early because we won't think like, when I pray, it's supposed to happen right then. I've seen things happen right then. But some things don't happen right then. Amen? If I never had a problem, would I really believe that God could solve them? If I never needed a miracle, could I believe God really could do a miracle for me? Amen? How much do I trust God? How much do I really believe God? I want all of you to remember, you're not what people say you are. You're what God says you are. And he said, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood that should show forth the praises of him. Honey, I don't know about you, but we're a blessed people in the hour that we live. We have a freedom to worship. We have a place to worship. If we want to shout, we can shout. If we want to cry, we can cry. You come as you are. There's not many places that you have that. We are blessed, and sometimes we take it for granted, Brother John. But I want, this is one thing you need to put on. But when you put it on, you got to use it. I can have all these good scriptures and have all this good stuff, but I got to use it when the battle comes. Thank you, my soldier. You look good. Praise the Lord. Got a soldier. The next thing the Lord showed me, come here, come, come here, Lazarus. Can you get up here without falling? I wish I had a tomb. Because there's so many people in the church world and the Christian world that's in a tomb. They are. Praise the Lord. And all of you know this story. I told you I'm not going to keep it on. All of you know this story. But when the Lord stood before Lazarus, after Mary and all them said, Oh, have you just been here? He wouldn't have died. God has appointed time for everything that happens that he can get the glory. Four days late. You're four days late. He stinketh by now. It said he was wrapped in his grave clothes. And I didn't put a napkin on his face because I didn't want him to fall. He even had a napkin left on his face. The Lord said, Lazarus, come forth. Come forth means just to pre present oneself. To step forward. Now listen to me. God spoke to a lot of us come forth. But see, the thing is, he still had grave clothes. He needed to change his clothes. Come on. Watch your grave clothes that's hanging on you. He wasn't living. He was existing. He come forth. He stood out. He appeared. Y'all come on now. You come on. Listen to what I'm saying to you. God said, come forth. You might appear. And you might say, here am I. Or you might just stay there. He couldn't even see because the napkin was still on his face. And the scripture says so many times people have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. We need the church needs to wake up and realize God is still the same and he changes not. Whew. When he said, Lazarus, come forth, Lazarus came forth, but he stood there. He was still bound. A lot of the church world is still bound. Your grave clothes could be past church hurts. 
that keeps you bound. It could be relationships. And let me say this about church hurts. When we allow that to do that, the enemy gets the, uh, gets the ups on us, I guess you'd say. They're winning. Because it keeps us from doing what God wants us to do if it keeps us out of church. Relationships. Envy, strife, malice, jealousy. What's your great plus? What's causing you to step out and come alive and be loosed and be free to do what God's called you to do? What's holding you back from growing and maturing God? He wasn't doing nothing. He was just standing there when Lazarus came forth. Is that true? Is that true? Have we had grave clothes on? Have we had things wrapped around our life that we can't seem to let go just so we can be free in God? How long has it been since some of us really felt the power of God really move within our being? And I'm not talking about shouting and running. I'm talking about feeling that presence of God move all over you and you know it's the hand of God that touched you. What kind of grave clothes we got on? There's somebody here because God don't give me a message that don't apply to people that's in the midst. So finally when he looked at Lazarus, he said to the disciples, Loose him. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, y'all ain't hearing me. Some of you need to be loosed in God. And I say to the church and to the church online and the church world, loose them and let them go free. It's time freedom comes back to the house of God, of serving God in the spirit. And I'm not talking about New Day. I'm talking about churches across this land. I don't want a form and I don't want a fashion. I don't want just a scripture read to me. I want to see the demonstration of the Spirit of God heal and deliver like He used to do. Oh, my God, I feel you, Jesus, now. Lazarus could have just stood there, never do nothing. But he said, loose him. Loose him and let him go free. God has set us free if you got the blood applied. And you hear him. And you take a bath in his word and a bath in his spirit. You can be free to do what God's called you to do. Thank you, Lazarus. Praise the Lord. I wish I had a tomb he'd come flying out of there. Hang on much more because I want you to realize something. We need to pray more than we do anything. When we gather in a building, sometimes we take it for granted. But the presence of God is here. I don't know. I got my notes in my hands. He, the presence of God is here. I don't want to be who I used to be. I don't want to even be who I used to be two or three years ago. I hoped I've moved up and grown and matured and the anointing of God's even greater in my life. So you don't want to be a standstill. He told the elite edition church, he said, I'd rather you be hot or cold, not lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Is that what he said? Come here, Jesus. Now I'm going to the book of John, the 20th chapter. Still the 11th chapter. And all of us know the story of what happens. In the, I want you to look at something. The Lord's really dropped in my spirit. Thank you, Lord. When Mary Magdalene went looking for Jesus, after he resurrected, she began to ask angels and everybody, where's he at? And when she got through talking to the angel, I believe this is the part, she turns around and she supposes him, not knowing it's Jesus, to be a gardener. And this is what you want to take on. This is what you want to put on too. She put, suppose means she believed. Look up the word. She believed. She expected. She trusted that he was the gardener. Y'all going to get in a minute. And when he said Mary, she knew he was the master gardener. Oh, y'all ain't getting this. Her mind had to go back when God began to till her ground and God began to prune her life and God 
began to weed out things in her life. He was the master, my God, the master farmer. I'm going to share something in a minute, but listen to this. She had to think about it because he dug the soul of her heart. He dug up the old uh, dark cloth, the things and sin in her life, and he delivered her from seven demons. And if you read a lot about Jesus in the Bible, he talks about stones. He, talk, he talks about the Word of God, the seed being planted. He talked a lot about farming and cultivating things. You understand what I'm saying? He was the greatest farmer there ever was. And he had preached life and he had preached love. But I want to take you somewhere. Stay right there, gardener Jesus. In the very beginning, God created a garden in Eden. Is that correct? And he put Adam and Eve there, right? Well, Adam and Eve failed in that garden. They disobeyed. They didn't keep their authority because they disobeyed. Somebody say disobeyed. They didn't complete the plan that God had laid out. So look at this. Jesus, he was the first man. Jesus was the second man, Adam, of the Spirit. Everybody with me? He ends up in the garden. Everybody say garden of Gethsemane where he's going to suffer and have to kill the flesh what Adam couldn't do, he was going to conquer sin. What Adam couldn't do, because disobedience is sin, he was going to finish what Adam couldn't do. So he has to go to the Garden of Gethsemane that you and I could be set free and death have no hold on us, sin have no hold on us. In the garden. Somebody say in the garden. Adam couldn't do it, so Jesus could do it. He, st he stayed there and he prayed. And he said, Lord, not my will. Eventually he said that, and not my will, but thy will be done. His flesh submitted to the Spirit of God. He conquered the flesh. Adam couldn't do that. All right, at the end of the thing, Jesus is buried. I ain't going to do nothing to you. He's buried and resurrected. In a garden tomb. So where it started at, he's going to end up in a garden tomb, and he's going to come forth as the master gardener. Y'all ain't getting that. But this time, he's going to plant some new seeds. He's going to plant new seeds because he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And there's a scripture that says, Oh, grave. Where's your victory? Oh, grave, where's your sting? He said the sting of death is sin. My God, he conquered sin. That you and I don't have to walk in sin and death. Oh, my Lord, you ought to be on your feet raising your voice and saying hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He did it for you and I. His message was going to be a resurrection message. He didn't want to just be resurrected himself. He wanted to resurrect the church. The reason he did Lazarus the way he did it, he said, Father, so these people won't believe I am who I am. And Jesus appears to a lot of people, but he is the master gardener because he is the one that can weak things out of your life. He is the one that can turn the soul of your heart. He's the only one to speak to death and it has to go more than a conqueror. Paul said, I can do all things in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I can, everybody say, I can do all things in Christ Jesus. Can I do it myself? No. In Christ Jesus. I, when I got a hold of that, it didn't excite y'all, but it excited me to realize what they couldn't do in the garden. God knew what he was doing. But he said, I'll just send Jesus. Jesus will come. He'll conquer it all. He might have to suffer. So he was the perfect sacrifice that you and I wouldn't have to suffer. We wouldn't have to go through death. We wouldn't have to go to hell in our mind. David says, sometimes I make my bed. My mind goes to the belly of hell. We put our own self in the belly of hell in our mind sometimes. We do it. And we blame the devil for it. Because when a thought comes in our mind, we just let it fester and fester and fester. But God will do what he said. If he said he'll heal your mama, he'll heal your mama. If he said he'll make a way for you, he'll make a way for you. But we got to give God our all. Sometimes we go before the Lord and we're asking him things and we do nothing for him. And I actually about to close because I know some of you are tired. You've been here all day and you're tired and it's running outside. It's a good time to sleep. But I want you to know something. If you want to be in God's army, 
You better raise up and start shaking herself and wake up and realize, hey, it don't matter what people think about me. It matters what Jesus thinks about me. And I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to put on my right clothes. I'm not going to have a malfunction of clothes, but I'm going to put on the right things to help fight my battle. If I got a battle going on in my mind, you get that helmet of salvation of deliverance on your mind and gird your mind with the truth and the word and the praises of God, and God will move for you. How many has ever let a thought come to your mind and before you got through, it was like a big old mountain about to destroy you? God promised you he's going to do something and say, oh, no, if he's going to do it, he'd already done it already. That's a lie of the devil. Don't let the enemy keep stealing and killing and destroying you. Don't let him keep taking things from you. Because God is going to cause a restoration to those that will put their life at the feet of Jesus and begin to trust him like they one time did and realize that the power of God is still the same and the anointing of God is what breaks the yokes and the fetters. It's not a man's hand. It's not a man this or a woman this. It's the power of the almighty God that will break yokes and fetters in your life. And I'm talking about every chain. Every chain that will bind you. But you've got to be willing to let go. There are some people, and I know this sounds bad, could be healed, but they don't want to be healed. For different reasons. If you can ever say I was greedy about something, I am about the Spirit and the anointing of God. I want everything that God has. People can play church. They can be this or they can be that. But I don't know about you, but I want to stand tall for the glory of God. And when I walk to him, I want to speak as the oracles of God. And when I minister or I teach, I want God to plant that seed or that word down inside that it begins to create life inside of you. But first you got to let that word go down inside of you and fall on good ground. And you'll begin to see it bloom and things will mature and things will begin to grow and new life will come in you. But if you sit there and say, I pray the same old prayer. I've heard that before. Well, you're going to keep hearing it before. And nothing ain't going to happen. But when you release your faith and say, God, I'm going to trust you no matter what. Two years ago, a doctor told me something to him. I wouldn't be here this long, but I've been here for two years. Nobody has got the time you're going to leave this world but God Almighty. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed. Somebody say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Say, so are you the one in the sheep clothing that don't have no identity? That don't know who you are? One day you're this and one day this. One day you're on the mountain, one time you're in the valley. Wishy-washy. We got to plant our feet on the firm foundation of the Christ Jesus, the rock of our salvation. He said, Peter, I'm going to build my church upon the rock. Y'all hear what I am saying? A lot of you have been to the belly of hell and back. You have been things in your life, but you got to let go of that, and you got to start moving forth in the word and the anointing that God's called you into and quit worrying about everybody else and say, God, here am I, send me. And he will send you equipped, whether you are a men's ministry, a women's ministry, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, whatever you might be, a singer. God will give you the very desires of your heart if you seek him early and you believe what you ask. God don't lie. I'm getting ready to open altar, believe it or not. Are you the one in sheep's clothing that you need to take off some stuff and be who you really are and take off the mask with all your flaws? When I go before the Lord, I might as well go naked before the Lord because he knows everything about me anyway. And I'm not talking about physically naked. Don't be scared to talk to your God. You ain't got to have all these these and thou's and thus and servant and all this. You talk to him out of your heart. God knows exactly who you are. And he knows where you've been. He knows where you're at now. And he knows where you're headed. 
And some of you don't know where you're headed yet, but he already knows. Don't, don't give up on your God. Don't get where you go sleepy on the Lord and you allow him to fall asleep in your life. Don't get weary in well-doing. Hello? Hold on. You might be the one that's on the brink of the miracle. Or you can be the soldier that is equipped to go out, but you've got to learn to use it with prayer. Or you've got to be the Lazarus type of clothing, grave clothes. You've got to get rid of them. You've got to start changing your clothes. You've got to start getting rid of the things that's holding you down and bogging you down and not letting you go forth. Some of you are full of the word of the Lord and things hold you back from being and doing what God's called you to do. Amen, Sister Judy. Or you can be Jesus, and I want to be not Jesus the man. I want to be the spirit that Jesus was, planting good seeds. Seeds of life, seeds of joy, seeds of peace that passes all understanding. Peace of healing, peace of healing within our families. Peace, God will give you exactly what you need. When you plant seed, it's going to bring forth what you plant. Right? If I plant, what is this, tomatoes, am I going to get apples? If I plant hatred, what am I going to get? If I plant love, and in one scripture in that same place that we're reading in Galatians, he said, put on, put on love, charity. Put it on. Put it on. That's what he said. Put it on, Paul did. You've got to learn what to take off and what to put on. When you wake up in the morning, what are you going to put on? I want to put on the full armor of God, but I want to be somebody that can plant seeds. I love to see people's lives changed. Once they was lost, but now they're found. I love to see people that's been an ad addict and God delivered. And we've seen a lot of them in this service here, in this building. Amen. And they stayed for a while and God did works in their life. And now they've gone different places and stuff. But God knows all about that. But we should be able to make a difference in somebody's life because Jesus made a difference in us or should have. And what I got on the inside and what you got on the inside, it should be good enough to give to somebody else if it's Jesus Christ. Because you can't fail if you give somebody Jesus. Now, if I try to give Stephanie a word, beat her over the head, she ain't going to receive me. But if I give her love. Love will reveal to you what's going on. Sometimes you don't want to see it. The Word of God will reveal to you what's going on. The answers that we look for, the Word of God will tell you what it is. Who do we trust, man more or God? When you wake up in the morning, what you going to put on? Some of you already decided, you know, a fireman has to wear fireman clothes. When he goes out to the fire. A policeman, and you are identified the way you wear even physical clothes sometimes you're identified. A policeman. Somebody knock on your door and say they're a policeman. They ain't got a uniform on. You ain't going to believe it's a policeman. Hello? He has his identity on. If I'm a Christian, how am I going to say this now? And I'm ugly to you all the time. Who am I? Am I the fountain with the bitter and the sweet? Sometimes we allow the flesh to take over. The old man. But he said, I want the old man to die. That the new man, Christ Jesus, can live inside of us. Some of us has had a rough week. Things just ain't gone our way. There's things that God needs to do. But have you went before the Lord and say, God, I need this to change? And really wrestle with God and say, God, I need you to change this. The best fit them and the best to fit me. I'm tired of struggling. There's somebody in the house that needs to pray that. And you may have been praying that. What you going to put on in the morning? Am I just going to do my devotions and that's it?
definitely put your helmet of salvation on. Because thoughts are going to come to you to try to defeat you. And God said, learn how to capture those thoughts and bring them into captivity under the obedience of Jesus Christ. Capture them. He told us to do that. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Even to go catch fish, he told the fishermen, that I'll make you fish. I don't know why the Lord got that in my spirit. When they went out and they couldn't fish, now he said, oh, catch on the right side. And they caught the fish. Well, if you're going to ca- catch fish for Jesus, what you got to do? Bait your hook with what? I'm going to put you on the spot. The love of God, number one. Now, if you go to somebody and you say, you're going to die and bust hell wide open, you already lost them. You need to get in church and you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do that. They might look at you and say, what do you need to do? Love covered a multitude of sin. Everybody in here is sin and come short of the glory of God. But God said, my love's covered it all. Don't dare look at somebody and judge them because you've never walked in their shoes. Oh, my God, my God, because it'll come back to you. It will come back to you. What you sow is what you reap. And sometimes it's through your children and grandchildren. I've seen things in my past years that people had did to me and some I really didn't even notice somebody told me and I've seen the very thing they said about me come against their family and I must destroy them. God is the judge. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. I didn't ask God to do anything that went with them. I pray that God will bless people and help people. Do I always agree with people? No. None of us in here always agree at the same thing, on the same thing. You wife and husbands don't agree on the same thing sometimes. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> but you love to disagree to agree. Amen? But I'm going to open this altar, and I want you to really think about what I said tonight. If you don't know your identity and what God has called you to do, and where you're headed, you need to be on the altar. I hadn't got to touch you. Brother John ain't got to touch you. And I already got a message for him. I don't put a microphone in his hand unless I need it. Tonight only. I want to be fully prepared what the enemy's got for me tomorrow. I want to wake up in the morning whether I, my aches and pains are there, still put on my right clothing. And sometimes I might be rolling on stuff to keep my body where it's aching. But I know what to put on to help that so I can praise the Lord and worship the Lord. Are y'all hearing me? It ain't being gay to something else, freeze or whatever. At least I got some of you laughing, coming out at your little thing there. Put on the right clothes in the morning, see how your day changes. But if you wake up, it's just going to be the same old thing today, same old problem. My husband's going to be the same old way. My wife's the same old way. The children are going to drive me crazy. That's exactly what's going to happen. You already predicted and spoke it. Be careful what you speak. Speak life. Do I make any sense to anything I said tonight? Now, some of you, when your button pops off or your zipper breaks or something, you're going to think, Judy, preach on that malfunction thing. But it was more than that. I want us as a body here to really get arm, our armor on that what God's getting ready to do, that we'll be right in the smack middle of it. And this church will be such a lighthouse that people from afar will come, not to see a man or woman, but to see the glory of the Lord and the manifestation of the Spirit of the Lord. God has so blessed this place. I think about where we came from, Meadowbrook, the little building, and where we are here. Sometimes we run 100 or over sometimes on Sunday morning. Is that true or not? It is. And when it ain't raining... 
Sometimes we run 60, 70 on Sunday nights, 50, 60, 70. I just tell it like this. I told Brother John this morning. I believe it was John. I said, you got some people don't come when it rains, raining Christians. And I shouldn't have said it, but it's the truth. I'll be honest. I don't like to drive in the rain. But I love my God. And it's okay if you don't. That's fine. I can't see good sometimes. One time I couldn't get here because the fog was so bad. I called, listen, I can't come. The fog is so bad I can't see. But God has not left you abandoned. I'm talking to somebody in this place. God has not abandoned you. He knows your heart. He knows your love. But you're warring bad in your mind and God wants to give you peace. Bobby, you want to sing? Oh, you come on then. Oh, music? Put music on. I'm going to invite us to come to the altar. So if you want special prayer, that's fine. But I want us to pray around the altar. If you don't want to pray about nobody, pray for Judy Rich. Because Judy Rich wants to be totally armed for the battles that's before me. You know, when you get older, you can't, how's it, how am I going to say this? When you get 50, it's a little different. When you get 60, it's a little different. John, when you get 70, it's a little different. Amen? Sometimes you can't run physically like you one time did. The other Sunday morning, I felt like running. John said, run. Why would you run? I thought, if I ran, I wouldn't be able to breathe. I wouldn't be able to move. And the glory of the Lord moved in this place. You know when God's getting ready to do something. And if the devil's fighting you, look up. Your redemption drives not. God's getting ready to do something. If the devil ain't bothering you, you better be worried. But if he's tugging at your mind and tugging at your heart, say, oh God, I'm yours. I'm yours. All I am and all I'm going to be and all I've been, I give to you, Lord. Let's everybody stand. Thank you, Adam. Glory to God. Four easy scenarios. But what category do we fit in it? You know, there's some people in our church body, some of you don't know, have starting to step out in what God's called them to do. And Sharon's one of them. I see Brother Tyler. He's not here tonight, but he's stepping out. Different ones. Sandy preaches here anyway, and different ones preach and minister in different ministries. But there's others. There's others. If you cry and you pray, God, use me, then be willing to let God use you. Did I say that right? If you're praying, God, use me, when he speaks you to do something, it might not be the greatest or mightiest thing or a great big title, but do the little things and he'll make you great. I'm talking about the God great in you, not you as a person man. People put too much faith in man and women. Don't get me wrong. We should honor them. Because pastors have a hard, well, I ain't say hard, but it's rough sometimes. You got all the people on your mind. One with this problem, one with that problem. Then you got things, got money, got to come in to fix this building. And it's going to come. Somebody say, it's going to come. God ain't started something, he's going to stop. Oh, my God, I felt that. God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And he's promised new day, new stuff. But we got to do our part. When the devil pushes you in the corner, begin to push back at him. You don't belong in no corner. Thought about that movie about that girl, babe. They stuck her in the corner. He comes in that thing and he drags her out and dances with her. He says, you don't belong in no corner. I don't even know what the name of the movie is. What is it, Pam? Dirty dance. We don't belong in a corner. We don't belong being bound down. What are we going to do about it? Praise the Lord. Play a little bit louder. Whatever you're playing, play a little bit louder. If anybody wants to join me up here around the prayer on the altar, just stand here and praise the Lord and pray. I want you to come on real quick because I'm not going to keep you for a long time.